Before we get into the next episode, I feel an obligation to correct a few mistakes I've made over the course of this LP, as well as point out a few things that I've missed. Most of these corrections come from you, the viewers, so thanks for sending them in. In Alex's nightmare at the start of the game, we found a clock in the observatory. I said the clock was stuck at 2.06, which is, in fact, wrong. Both Xerxes333 on YouTube and Mr. Xenophobe on Something Awful notified me that the clock is actually stuck at 1.51. This could be for a few reasons, one of which is that Double Helix just forgot about it. If you remember, there was a note in Alex's nightmare that read, it seems they're attracted to light. That's why people who need light to see are their natural prey. They also react strongly to sound. If you want to go on living, you'd be better off just sitting in the dark and staying quiet. But even that probably won't save you. Voidberger on the Something Awful forums pointed out that this note is actually copied from another note in Silent Hill 2. Why is this? Well, probably for homage purposes. That or Double Helix just wanted an easy way of telling the player that nurses are attracted to light. I should also mention that the sound effects for the items, as well as the font, were also taken straight from Silent Hill 2. James Bogg and Voidberger from the Something Awful forums would like to remind us all that the knife Alex picked up in his dream somehow managed to escape reality, as well as all of Alex's healing items and children's drawings. Which is really fucking weird considering the flashlight was the only item to follow dream world rules and not exist. During the loading screens of Homecoming, there are little hints telling you how to deal with certain enemies and other in-game related tips. Chronox2 from the Something Awful forums mentioned that when Alex appears in these screens, sometimes he has a haircut. This is because Double Helix forgot to swap out the earlier version of Alex, one that had a more military style buzz cut, with the final version that appears in the game. In the Boogeyman sub video for episode 5, I said that Pyramid Head doesn't actually have a name. Fans just decided to call him Pyramid Head based purely on his looks. Well, several people, Clever Spambot, Rick Garrett, Alan R, and Rent Cavalier, have informed me that in Silent Hill 2, James actually does refer to the Red Pyramid thing as Pyramid Head, just never in cinematics. If you examine Pyramid Head's great knife or examine their dead bodies, James will refer to them as Pyramid Head. Gnome Bitten on Something Awful mentioned that the ceremonial dagger bears resemblance to the Spear of Longinus, the lance used to pierce Jesus' side during the crucifixion. It's possible that this is the case, being that there are several other religious references throughout Homecoming. As a Kirby Gunette said in the Something Awful thread, and W Baker82 pointed out on YouTube, the Bogeyman's Great Knife is actually modeled to look like a Kabar, just like Alex's combat knife. Kabars have been in use since 1942 by the Marines and the Navy, which is kind of weird because Alex is supposed to be in the army. Just as Wheeler's escorting Alex through the police station, there are large billboards with wanted posters stuck to them. Mia1501 on YouTube mentioned that two of the posters are actually Zodiac sketches. Didn't notice this the first time around, but the area just outside of where Fitch bites the dust has slowly bleeding walls. Obviously a reference to Fitch's cutting problem. Hariston SA made sure to mention that Scarlet is more glitchy than previously thought. Apparently there's a bug during Scarlet's boss fight that causes the first phase to be impossible to get out of. The quick time event simply doesn't work no matter how fast you mash it. A quick Google search lets us know that this is actually a fairly common bug. So Gnome Bitten heard the stock scream used in Update 8 and went on a mission to determine the name of it. Thankfully, the Something Awful thread came through with flying colors, and both Songbearer and Hiroyuki determined that the scream is actually called the Insane Tantrum. It's normally used when someone gets horribly injured. A spooky ghost on Something Awful wants us all to know, look is like an old beat cleaver. Both Blastinus and Clockwork Chaos want to remind us that the medals Alex found in Hell House, the Heart of Darkness, Vile Axe, and the Fallen Star are actually alternate forms of the medals Adam Shepard received, which were the Purple Heart, Good Conduct, and Silver Star. 
Foodburger in the essay thread decided to give us all a little refresher course on White Claudia, the flower used to make PTV in Silent Hill 1. According to some documents in that game, White Claudia is found near water, reaches a height of 10 to 15 inches, and has white blossoms. Well, during the cutscene in Homecoming where Alex wakes up next to Toluca Lake, you can spy some long white flowers. White Claudia? You decide.
Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been four years since my last confession. <sighs> I don't blame you for ignoring me, Father. I'm not even sure you can help me. I'm lost. I'm so deep beyond the reach of my faith and I'm seeking further away. What could you have done that was so terrible? I took my role as a father and I turned it into a daily chore. Fed him, clean him, put him to bed. I treated the dog with more respect. And when I was given a second son, the first might as well have been a stranger sleeping in our house. I feel that you could start loving your son at any time. I do love my son, Father. I love both my sons. But I had to make a choice. And the only way to live with that was to make sure my son never loved me. I had to make sure that he would never feel joy or compassion. All the things that make life worth living. You must understand, I was only trying to make things easier for him. And for me. And for this selfishness, I ask forgiveness. If you truly want forgiveness, then you already have it. Thank you, Father. And now I have something for you, Father. I don't need anything from you. What? Why do you think God cares about your problems? Doesn't God give us a chance to repent? Won't he listen to me just this time? There are some people God doesn't bother with. What are you telling me? Are you saying my prayers fall on deaf ears? The only prayer I will say for you is this. Whatever hell awaits you, it won't be long before you see it. Well, if that is his will, I accept it. And now I have something for you, Father. I don't need anything from you. What? That is true. He does listen. But do you believe he has heard you? It feels like a thousand hands pushing the air from my lungs. It must be him, hearing me, showing me he is beside me. That isn't God. That's your conscience, making sure you never forget what you've done. I don't want to forget. I just want to be given the chance to explain myself when the time comes. If you truly want forgiveness, then you already have it. Thank you, Father. And now I have something for you, Father. I don't need anything from you. What? But now do you feel like what you did was wrong? I knew that it was wrong, but I pretended I didn't have a choice. Then how can you ask me to forgive you when all that time you could have fixed things? Because I'm scared of what's to come when time runs out. The only prayer I will say for you is this. Whatever hell awaits you, it won't be long before you see it. Well, if that is his will, I accept it. And now I have something for you, Father. I don't need anything from you. What?
should I do? I'm strong out, addicted to you. My body aches now that you're gone. My supply fell through. You're glad they gave me everything you had and more. You're crazy. So throughout our church journey, we've been collecting these plate things, each with a different thing associated with them. There's the kneeling man plate, the candle plate, the sword plate, the chalice plate, and the tree plate. Seems like there's five things attached to the organ too. Desire, vengeance, sacrifice, sorrow, and penitence. The puzzle here is figuring out which plate is associated with which theme, which can be done by remembering where we found each plate. We found the chalice plate in a baptismal font with Old Faithful in it. In Christian religion, a chalice containing wine symbolizes Christ's blood, which he spilled as he sacrificed his life for humanity. Chances are good the chalice plate represents sacrifice, possibly of corpse guy here. Those bugs were locked in there with him, seemingly on purpose. The kneeling man plate was the one Adam Shepard gave to us after the confessional scene. Chances are pretty good it represents penitence. We got the candle plate from that giant statue of a crying woman with broken arms. It probably represents sorrow, especially since candles are symbolic of mourning inside a church. The tree plate was behind the third painting in a triptych. The first painting was of a beautiful woman, while in the third painting there was a man being restrained by the roots of a tree, which was in the second painting. The man was seemingly pursuing the woman because his eyes were fixed on her, so the tree probably represents lust. Bonus useless factoid, the painting of the woman in the triptych has already appeared in the game. It was in the hotel. Finally, we have the sword plate, which we found beneath three large stained glass windows. This triptych displays a man looking on in horror as a masked executioner, or vault deal or something, skewers a knight in the back. We already know all the other solutions, so this has to be vengeance, but I'm confused as to why. Vengeance implies the knight did something to cause the executioner to seek revenge, but we aren't told what that is. If anything, you'd probably look at this painting and think assassination or murder or something. Vengeance is kind of a leap. Save Joshua. Joshua? You can't save him. He needs to get out of here. Stop giving me orders, Dad. You have no idea what I'm capable of. No, you shut the fuck up, Dad! You hate me. It's okay. I don't blame you. I don't hate you. I forgot you. A long time ago. I never meant to hurt you, son. I had to make a choice. And now I'm paying for it. We all are. After all I've done, you still wear my old dog tags. That must mean something. What are you talking about? These are mine. I'm a soldier. Just like you wanted. Alex, you've been in the hospital. I know. I was wounded in battle. No. A mental hospital. You've been there ever since the accident. No. That's not true. 
I'm a soldier. I protect people. We had to take you there. After that night. After I gave your brother this. What is this thing? What did you do? Where's Joshua?
Don't you agree? Soldier. So this is the Church of the Holy Way, as noted by the plaque near the door. It's supposedly a home for members of the Order, though none of them seem to be inside. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. This church has several references to the Silent Hill movie throughout it, besides just the general look and feel. There's an air raid siren out front, which is possibly used to warn of other world shifts, heavy use of barbed wire, and even the symbol used exclusively by the cult in the movie. I'm going to try not to freak out too hard over this, but it's inevitable. Both the Halo of the Sun and the movie cult symbol in the same church? Even Christoph Gans, the director of the Silent Hill movie, said that the cult in the movie was completely different from the order in the games. So what the hell is going on here? It's probably nothing. I'd wager that it's just a nod to the movie. This confessional scene is probably really familiar to those of you who played Silent Hill 3. That's because Silent Hill 3 featured a confessional scene just like this one, complete with multiple choice forgiveness. There are some differences though. Silent Hill 3's confessional scene has a hidden speaker who talks ambiguously. It's believed to be Dahlia, Alessa's mother, repenting for the terrible things she's done, but there's no way to tell for sure. Homecoming speaker is without a doubt Alex's father, Adam Shepard, because it says so in the damn achievement you get whether you forgive him or not. Another difference is that in Silent Hill 3, the speaker is talking to Heather as if she were God, not a priest. Dear God, please forgive me. Also, the two options presented in Silent Hill 3 are to say, I forgive you, or not to say anything. On New Game Plus, saying I forgive you to the woman is actually the bad choice and leads to the possessed ending. This is probably because by answering the woman's pleas for mercy from God, you're implying that you are God. In Homecoming, it's less complicated. Alex wanders into a confessional and pretends to be a priest. Forgiving your father is the good choice, while not forgiving him is the bad choice. We'll find out why later. Holy crap, Alex wasn't in the army? Then how the hell does he know how to use combat knives, shotguns, and close quarters combat? Does just thinking you're able to do something mean you're suddenly able to do it? I'm sorry, but this is really weird. Homecoming's combat was changed drastically from the other Silent Hill games that preceded it, and we all thought the reasoning behind this was because Alex was a war vet. And Alex Shepard, he was at war when he was, uh, before he came back to Shepard's Glen, so he's got a little bit more military training, or weapons training, than any previous Silent Hill uh, main character, so with that, there's a new uh, fighting system. Now we learn he actually isn't, the whole Alex is good in combat angle doesn't even make any sense. I mean, I don't have a problem with Double Helix changing the combat system. The tank controls of olden days made combat uneasy by making it hard to control your character. Nowadays, developers have many tools and tricks to achieve greater levels of unease without making it a pain in the ass to turn left. But when the entire premise of the switch in combat is based on a character's experience on the battlefield, and then you reveal that they actually don't have any of that experience, it just doesn't make any sense. Though I guess some of it does make a little sense. I mean, besides Alex being severely stupid. Dr. Destructo on Something Awful posted a fairly large and fairly awesome description of why the guns in Homecoming are weird and silly. I included a link to his post in the description of this video. He says that shotguns have smaller than possible ejection ports, the Mark 23 isn't actually a Mark 23, the rifle lacks a rear aperture sight, the list goes on. Well, these oddities now kind of make some sense. I mean, if monsters can be conjured into real life through Alex's subconscious, why can't guns? And if you've never really used a gun before, or don't know how they properly work, the guns you conjure may be misshapen, lacking proper gun things, and you'd probably have a difficult time telling the difference between a Mark 23 and a Beretta. Though the more likely scenario is that Double Helix just rushed the game out the door. Regardless, there are a few interesting things that Double Helix did to allude to Adam Shepard's fate earlier in the game. If you remember a few minutes ago, there was that stained glass triptych of a man being skewered by an executioner while some guy looks on. Seems kind of familiar to what just happened, huh? There was also that part at the beginning of the game where a doctor wheeled us down a hallway. Well, if you look closely, the doctor is actually Alex's dad. It's also kind of cool to note that the doctor dies in the same way that Adam Shepard does, skewered and cut in half by Pyramid Head. <laughs> 